In this video, we're going to see an example of a vector addition. Now, let me give you a uh, caveat when we, at the start of this video. We're gonna see another method later on where we use Cartesian vector form. There's gonna be a lot, of, a lot easier. But the important part of this is to realize that when you're adding vectors, you need to take into consideration not only the magnitude of the vector, but the direction of the vector. So I'm gonna show you an example using a different method. Uh, and then later on, we're going to see what happens when you use Cartesian vector form. All right, so to start, let's say that we have two vectors. The first vector is a 10 kilonewton force that goes down. Let's say this, this is 10 kilonewtons. Let's call this is F1. And then the second vector is a vector that is at an angle let's call this f2 and the magnitude of this vector is going to be 15 kilonewtons 15 kilonewtons now we know that this angle is 40 degrees and what we asked to do is to find the resultant R that is F1 plus F2. So that's what the that's what the example is all about. So let's write here example. Very good. So I'm gonna use the parallelogram law to be able to find the answer for this. And uh, to be able to do this, the first step for me is to actually do that parallelogram. That parallelogram is going to help me determine the magnitude of that force as well as the direction of that force. So let's just start with that, uh, drawing that parallelogram that shows the two vectors as well as the, result, the, the resultant vector in a, uh, in, in a graphical form. So we're gonna say that um, to draw this parallelogram, I need to have my first vector, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna just put a title here. My first vector F1, let me put it uh, somewhere in here to have some space and that's going to be F1 then we're going to, I'm going to have my vector F2 and remember to do this parallelogram I need to put the two tails of the vectors in the same location so I'm going to have this it's going to be F2 and then to complete the parallelogram, what I need to do is draw parallel lines to each vector, and that completes my parallelogram. All right, the magnitudes might be a little bit off, okay? So what we're gonna find out is, we're gonna find more information as we go through the problem. Um, now let's find my resultant. My resultant, at least in this diagram, and I think this magnitude of F2 is a little bit small compared to the magnitude of F1 in my drawing. But this is going to be my resultant R. The angles that I have is I know that the angle of the vector F2 with respect to the horizontal is 40 degrees so if this over here is 40 degrees the internal angle has to be 50 degrees why because this 40 plus 50 gives me 90 degrees and then since this is a parallelogram what's going to happen is that the opposite angle is also going to be 50 degrees 
Now I know the magnitude of those of, of two of the sides for F1. We know that this is 10 kilograms, right? The magnitude is 10 kilograms, and the magnitude of F2 is going to be 15 kilograms. Kilonewtons, not kilograms. Kilonewtons, sorry. Very good. So that this diagram over here is my paddle, my parallelogram, right? That parallelogram is showing me all of the directions and all of the angles that I need to be able to solve this problem. Now, the next step is for me to use uh, some of the uh, trigonometric fun functions that you might see in other classes. So in this particular occasion, uh, we're going to use the law of cosines, right? I'm going to use the law of cosines. And I'm going to use the, tri the top triangle that you see in here. Let me try to shade that triangle, let's say, in, um, let's try to use uh, yellow. So this triangle over here is the one that I'm going to consider for this calculation, okay? That yellow triangle. I know this magnitude, so this side is 15 kilonewtons, and I know the angle of 50 degrees. Okay, so for this um, law of cosines, oh, and I know something else, right? I also know that this over here is 10 kilonewtons. It's 10 kilonewtons, right? Why? Because this, this vertical distance has to be the same in both sides to be able to be a parallelogram. Okay, very good. So now using the law of cosines, What we can say is that the distance of or the magnitude of the resultant, and for that I'm gonna use this R. That means those two vertical lines means the magnitude of R is going to be equal to the magnitude of F1 square plus the magnitude of F2 square minus two times the magnitude of F1, the magnitude of F2, times the cosine of that angle theta, which is 50 degrees. Now, if this looks unfamiliar to you, I do recommend you go back and study sines, cosines, law of sines, law of cosines, but all I'm doing is applying that law of cosines to this triangle, right? I'm using, I'm using this side that is 10 kilonewtons, using this side that is 15 kilonewtons, and I'm using this angle, which is 50 degrees. That's all I'm doing. All right, doing these calculations, we have that this magnitude of R is going to be equal to uh, sorry, I forgot a square here. So this is the magnitude square. So the magnitude of R is going to be equal to the square root of 10 square plus 15 square minus two times 10 and 15 times the cosine of, cosine of 50 degrees. And if my calculations are correct, it tells me that the magnitude of R is going to be 11.5 kilonewtons. All right, let me check how I'm reporting this. I have three significant figures and units, so it should be okay. So, all right, this is, this is part of the solution, right? The magnitude of the vector. Now, the other part that we can that, that we need is to be able to find the direction of that of that vector. So let's define an angle. Let's define an angle here, uh, and let me use uh, this green again. And I'm going to try to define this angle as alpha. Okay. And what I'm going to try to do 
is let's try to find the um, let's try to find the, the the angle alpha using now the law of sines. So let me write that down underneath here. Now with the law of sines, what you want to do is to create relationships between the sines of the angles and the distance of some of the of that triangle. So what I can say is that the magnitude of R divided by the sine of the opposite side and if we look at the uh, of the opposite angle and the opposite angle is going to be that 50 degrees over the sine of 50 degrees is going to be equal to 15 let's do that let's do this uh let's try to find this angle first this angle this blue angle over here okay and that blue angle over there let's call that theta so that will be 15 over the sine of theta okay and that blue angle this is theta all right now we can solve for theta and say that the angle theta is the inverse sine of 15 times sine of 50 over the magnitude of r and we found the magnitude of, of r to be 11.0 kilonewtons and by doing these calculations I should get that theta is equal to 87.69 degrees so that actually means that my drawing is actually not quite right right this is um, 87.69 degrees uh, is that angle is that angle theta Now, if I want to do this with respect to the horizontal, what I'm going to have to do is uh, look at how much is left to be able to reach those 90 degrees. So what I'm, what I'm going to have to do is to say that my angle alpha is going to be equal to 90 times theta which is equal to 90 minus 87.69. That alpha will be equal to 2.31 degrees. That in conjunction with my magnitude will solve, will be the solution of this problem. So remember, this is that when you're defining vectors, the idea is not only to calculate the magnitude, but we also need to calculate some type of direction. So in this case, we have that magnitude and we have that direction. The magnitude will be this uh, 11.5 kilonewtons and the um, uh, angle will be this 2.31 degrees.